shade matching a tooth can sometimes be challenging. In this video, we talk about different tools that I use to determine the shade, and I will also show you a custom shade guide I'm currently making for Emacs restorations. Hello and welcome to another video from the Comprehensive Dentist. My name is Dr. B and today we're talking about shade matching. Getting that perfect shade can be difficult. It is often said that the toughest shade match is restoring the single central incisor. Restoring any tooth where you're trying to make it match the dentition can be a challenge. If you're like me, you try your best and sometimes you get it right and sometimes you don't. Even if the shade is off just a tiny bit, it bugs me and it just drives me bonkers. Uh, sometimes the patient is less critical than I am and despite my opinion of the restoration, the patient is happy and we have success in that aspect. Thank God for those moments. When I take a shade, I try to not pigeonhole myself or limit myself to just one way of confirming the shade. What does that mean? Many people use the Vita Classical Shade Guide. This shade guide has been in use since 1956. Wow, who knew it's been around for that long? We have this shade guide in every operatory and I use it every time I'm trying to match a dental shade. It's a great shade guide to have, but it has its limitations. And what are these limitations, you might ask? Well, hopefully we're all familiar with the concepts of hue, value, and chroma. Every perceivable color in the visual spectrum lies within a three-dimensional color space with value being how light or dark the color is, hue being the actual color we see such as like yellow, blue, red, etc., and chroma being the saturation or the intensity of the color. When we talk about teeth, teeth shades fall within a color space based on the value, hue, and chroma. Think of this two space as all the possible combinations of value, hue, and chroma for teeth. The Vita Classical Shade Guide represents only 16 shades or 16 positions within this three-dimensional tooth color space. If you plot these 16 shades out on the tooth color space, you can see that there are voids in the area of coverage and heavy concentrations of colors in certain areas of the color space. So when we look at shade matching in regards to the tooth color space, if our patient is close to one of the Vita Classical 16 shades, shade matching becomes a lot easier. If, however, the patient's tooth shade falls between shades or is in an area of the tooth color space where there is a void in the shade guide, it is more difficult to color match. So knowing the limitations of the Vita Classical Shade Guide, newer shade guides like the Vita 3D Master Shade Guide were developed. With the Vita 3D Master, you now have up to 26 shade samples. And this can cover more of the tooth color space and even has the possibility of creating intermediate shade combinations by mixing shades. Another interesting tool for getting the shade is the Vita Easy Shade. The Easy Shade can measure a broad range of shades and can even measure intermediate shades as well. It has a multitude of options but makes taking a shade super easy. You simply point it at the tooth, you want to match, and then you hit a button. So I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on all these different Vita options I just mentioned as that could be a video in and of itself. But I will say I prefer to use all the available tools I have to give me more information to make an informed decision on the shade. What do I mean by that? I mean, I will take the Vita Easy Shade and I will find out what shade that recommends. I then take the Vita Classical Shade Guide and try to pick the closest shade to the tooth I'm matching. And hopefully the classical shade is corresponding or agreeing with the Easy Shade recommendation. So if the easy shade says that you know a tooth is A2, I like to pull out the Vita Classical Shade Guide A2 tab and see how it looks. Um, if it looks good and these two are jiving, that makes me feel even more confident with picking the shade. So I like to use these different options to make an educated decision if you will, um, just to get as close to the right shade as I can based on these different options. 
In addition to the Vita shade guides and the Easy Shade, what are some other things I use to pick a shade? Well, if I'm working with Emacs, making an indirect restoration, you know, creating things like Emacs crowns, veneers, inlays, onlays, etc. Now I'm trying to match a ceramic to a natural tooth. And matching Emacs is what sparked the idea for this video, by the way. If I am shade matching for Emacs, I have a couple of other things I like to use in addition to the Vita options to select the shade. So a couple years ago, I stumbled across this Emacs Press and Emacs CAD shade guide. Now, I primarily use Emacs CAD because we do a lot of CAD CAM in our office, but here's another option to help us choose a shade. When you look at this, you may notice that the tabs are kind of a dull surface finish. Um, they're not very glossy. This represents a bisque bake, meaning that this looks like what the porcelain will look like after it's fired, but it hasn't been glazed. So if I use this shade guide, I'm using it to try to match the base color of the tooth. Uh, when I'm matching a tooth, uh, trying to, to determine the shade, I like to look at the incisal one half of the tooth I'm referencing. I try to match it to that incisal one half, not the cervical one half. Now one exception to this is if I'm trying to match a dark tooth to the other natural teeth. In those cases, I would try to match the cervical half of the tooth instead of the incisal half. But for the majority of the cases, I try to match the incisal half. So using the shade guide, I try to match the incisal one half to the closest shade tab representing the base shade. I'll use that shade guide. I'll try to match the incisal one half to the Vita classical shade guide. So I have multiple things kind of giving me feedback on what the shade should be. And I say base shade, meaning the overall shade of the restoration. Uh, sometimes in the cervical, you have a little darker area that's more saturated in color. And in the incisal, you have a more translucent area or hues of blue or purple. But the majority of the tooth is close to a specific value in hue or base shade, if you will. If you get this base shade correct, you can then tweak the cervical and incisal areas with cutbacks that allow you to add characterized porcelain, or you can add stains instead of doing a cutback. Um, these stains can be added to cervical areas or incisal areas, and that allows you to characterize the tooth. So you have options to take this base shade and make it blend a little bit better by tweaking it in the lab with either a cutback or doing staining and glazing. So in addition to the Vita shade options, I like to pull this shade guide out as well to give me more information to work with when selecting a shade for the tooth. The last thing we could do to help confirm shade is to reference a custom shade guide. Now, what is a custom shade guide? It is a shade guide made from the material that you intend to use. So you can make these for Emacs, Empress, Seltra Duo, whatever material you use. I just learned about making these custom shade guides earlier this year, and I learned it from Dr. James Clem. Uh, Dr. Clem has his own YouTube channel and teaches CAD CAM content on an educational site as well. Um, he's got really good content, good high quality videos, so I would encourage you to check him out if you have time and you think CAD CAM dentistry is something you'd like to learn more about. So let's look at how to make a custom shade guide. I'm currently making a custom shade guide for Emacs, so I will show you what I have so far. I mentioned before that I use Emacs CAD because we use CAD CAM technology to design and mill our restorations in-house. We still use a dental lab for some things, but I can use CAD CAM for a lot of things, and if I can use it, I will. All right, so here I have a model of a prepped central incisor. Now using this model, I designed and milled a full coverage crown for the central incisor. If you're not familiar with CAD CAM restorations, you'd basically do a digital impression using an intraoral camera. Once you scan the mouth or the model in this case and obtain the digital impression, you then do some digital model work and design the restoration. The software gives me tons of options for adjusting and manipulating the restoration. If you've ever waxed up a tooth in the lab, think of this as a digital wax up. Once I have the tooth the way I want it, I then send this information to a milling machine where the restoration is carved out of a ceramic block. In this case, I'm using Emacs. 
Before Emacs CAD is fired in the oven, it's actually purple. And this purple block, or sometimes it's called a blue block, is a softer and weaker material comprised of 40% lithium metasilicate. Now, of course, we don't put purple crowns in people's mouths, so we do fire these in an oven, and out of the oven comes a crystallized 70% lithium disilicate. So when my Emacs CAD restoration is milled, I clean it with a steamer and prepare it for crystallization in the oven. When making a custom shade guide, you need some way to label all the crowns in the shade guide. Using the Emacs crystal shades and stains, I choose a dark stain like a mahogany, and then with a small triple zero brush or double zero brush, I label the lingual of the crown with the shade of the crown. For example, I write A1 or A2, etc. I then bake the crown in the oven without a glaze or any custom staining. When the crown comes out of the oven, it represents the base shade of the restoration, such as an A1, A2, etc. Next, I use the Ivo Color Stain and Glaze system to add glaze to the restoration. Ivo Color is my currently preferred method for staining and glazing anterior Emacs restorations. Using the Ivacolor glaze paste, I cover the crown in glaze and refire the crown in the oven with a correction firing cycle. Out of the oven, I now have a glazed Emacs restoration in a specific shade. So this crown I have here is a glazed A1 crown. On the back or lingual of the crown, you can see where I labeled the crown using a dark stain. So I should mention that, you know, for this crown, I use the Ivacolor glaze. Now, if you use a spray glaze, you can do it that way, or you can use the Emacs Crystal Glaze as well, whatever you prefer. So now I have a crown for A1, and to get other shades, I simply just mill out the exact same restoration again and again, but use different shades for each mill. I then repeat the firing and glazing process for each crown. And so far I have A1, A2, A3 crowns milled and prepared. And you will notice that all of these crowns look the same in regards to shape and contour, but they are different shades. I plan to continue milling out crowns in various shades until I have enough options covering the variety of shades available. And really I'm just gonna focus on the shades that I use primarily in my practice. So it's gonna be like A shades and probably some B shades. Those are the most popular ones that I use. And you can do this for as many crowns as you like. Um, another thing to keep in mind for Emacs CAD is not only do these blocks come in different shades, but there are different translucencies as well. So the blocks I have made so far represent the LT blocks or the low translucency blocks. So I can make custom shade guides for the other translucency blocks as well. Um, this would give me crowns in the A shades for LT blocks, and I could also have A shades for HT or high translucency blocks, and A shades for the MT or medium translucency blocks as well. Really, it's up to you how big or small you want to make this custom shade guy. And a lot of it just depends on what material you use in your office. I'm going to do these for Emacs. I'll probably do some of these for Empress, and that will be my two big materials that I do this for. So we have these crowns ready to go, now what? When we prep the tooth for restoration, we are removing tooth structure, leaving a smaller cut down portion of the tooth. The preparation has a shade of its own. We call this the prep shade or the stump shade. When you're trying to match the shade of a tooth for an indirect restoration, the prep shade will be a factor to consider in the final color of the restoration. This is exactly why dark preps are sometimes hard to shade match over because the dark shade shows through uh, more translucent ceramics and it makes the final restoration appear dark. Now I'm not going to cover how to deal with dark prep shades in this video. That it's, that's its own topic so that would be a big video to cover. What I do want to cover is how to consider the prep shade when choosing a shade. Once the tooth you're working on is prepped, you can determine the shade of the prep. All right, here we have a shade guide called the Natural Dye Material Shade Guide. 
This is a product made by Avaclar Vivident and it represents nine different prep shades. You want to determine which of these nine shades more closely matches the prep shade of the tooth you're working on. So sometimes the prep may have a variety of shades, but you should try to pick the darkest, most prominent shade that you see. Now that you know the shade of the prep, you can then create a custom dye for your custom shade guide. So Ivaclar also makes a product called Natural Dye Material. This is a putty or composite-like material that you can use to create a custom dye, if you will, of your prep. By having all the crowns be the same shape and design, the natural dyes can be easily interchanged for all the different crown shades. You can then use these different shades of crowns and natural dyes after you prep to determine which shade of Emacs looks best with the natural teeth. And why do this? Well, sometimes when you use a Vita shade guide to determine the shade, the Emacs shade that corresponds to the selected shade doesn't always match well in the end. Even those classical shade guides can, over time, the color can change on those, especially if you're surface disinfecting those with like cavicide. They aren't always accurate, and as we've learned, they don't cover the full spectrum of colors for teeth. Creating a custom shade guide is just one more way to get more information so I can make an informed, educated decision about the shade and hopefully have a better chance of producing the best results for the patient. All right, so we've talked about different tools you can use to match the shade of a restoration to the natural teeth. We talked about the Vita Classical Shade Guide, the Vita 3D Master Shade Guide, the Vita Easy Shade, the Ivaclar Emax Shade Guide, and creating your own custom shade guide using materials that you commonly use. If you'd like to learn more about creating your own custom shade guide, I would encourage you to go check out comprehensivedentist.com. This is our education site and I have also posted a kind of behind the scenes kind of video that walks you through how I make the custom shade guide and really more on how you can use it. If you think that sounds like something you'd be interested in or think you might like to make your own custom shade guide, go check it out. If you like this video, please hit the like button. If you have not subscribed, please do so. I would greatly appreciate it. I want to thank you for watching. May God bless you and your dental practice. And I will see you next time.